Hi, my name is Jeremiah, and today we'll take a look at the Anitech G77, which is a rear view mirror dash cam. Let's go over the specifications. This dash cam features a 4.5 inch LTPS touchscreen. Uh, it has 12 megapixel lens that can capture at 170 degrees wide angle. The video resolution is 1080p and 720p at 30 FPS. It has an internal G sensor, GPS support, and also supports loop recording. Looking at the camera, it is touchscreen, but it also has buttons such as the power, menu, up and down arrow, and OK. At the top of the dash cam, we have the USB port, which powers the dash cam, rear camera port, SD card slot, and a GPS port. On the back of the camera, you will find the reset button and the built-in mic, as well as the 12 megapixel camera. Inside the box, we have a rubber strap, car charger, USB connector, and a rear camera. This is the power adapter which powers the dash cam. One end is plugged into the car and the other is plugged in into the dash cam using a USB Type-A mini port. Up next is the rear camera. The specification is not provided in the package but this camera definitely has lower video quality compared to the front cam. It has four small LED lights to improve the visibility at night. The cable of the camera is about 5 meters which is long enough for most vehicles and it also comes with another set of cables to be tapped into the reverse light which will allow the dash cam to automatically switch from front cam to the rear cam when you place your car in reverse. Lastly, it also comes with a USB cable if you want to power it using a USB port. Installation is simple, you just have to strap the camera to your existing rear view mirror Install the rear camera at the back of the car and fit the cables at the top. The camera will power up automatically once the car is started and the camera will start recording as soon as it's finished booting up. By default, the camera will display the front view and a small screen showing the rear view. It has a toggle switch to change it to show the front view only or the rear view only. When you put your car in reverse, it will show guidelines to help you gauge your distance when backing up. When you go to the menu, we can see options to adjust the resolution between 1080p and 720p. It also has the option to turn off auto record. RT is the option if you want the camera to slice recording every one minute or every five minutes. It also has the option to adjust the exposure. If the video at night is dark, then you can increase the exposure to make the surroundings more visible, but the video quality will be more grainy. G-Sensor is a feature that allows the camera to automatically record if your car experiences sudden movements, including impacts from other car. You have the option to adjust the sensitivity. I personally set the sensitivity to low since anything higher than that sometimes records the footage when I shut the car door. In the main menu settings, the frequency can be changed between 50 or 60 Hz. You can play around with this to reduce the flicker. You can also change the language, parking monitor, which I haven't noticed doing anything different, uh, shutdown time, key tone, backlight time, power off delay, date, card format, and system info. This is a recorded video during the day. The video quality is clear. It shows some flicker that may be affected either by the frequency or the SD card that I'm using since I only have class for a micro SD. At night, the footage is also clear with some noticeably video noise. And the only complaint I have is that the video is overexposed on areas of the video where your headlight is flashing. So you won't be able to read plate numbers when your headlight is flashing through it. Other than that, the night vision looks okay. This is the footage of the rear camera. The dash cam simultaneously records front and the rear footage when it is recording. So the front camera records at approximately 157 MB per minute and the rear camera records at 45 MB per minute. The videos are saved in AVI format. So for the final verdict, the camera recording quality is clear but it's not HD even if I set it at 1080p resolution. I suggest getting at least a 16GB micro SD card since it records at around 200 MB per minute. Overall, this is a good product for its price. It costs around 2,500 pesos to 3,000 during the time of recording. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks.